Um, I, I, I didn't really want to become one. <laughs> um, no, somebody um, that I knew very well was doing a movie and he just said, oh, do you want to be in it? You know, it'd be a laugh. So that's how I kind of got into it. And to be honest, I didn't even know what I was doing. It was just a bit of fun. And, um, and then when we actually went out and saw the film, a few people were going, oh, you were really good in that. You know, you should, should be an actor. And I was thinking, well, I'm actually thinking of selling my business, so maybe I'll just sell my business and become an actor. And I know that sounds completely nuts, and it is, um, but that's kind of how I got into it. And, um, yeah, that was the, the beginning of uh, my kind of acting and producing quest. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, because he was dead, you couldn't really do a lot of research. Um, but I did sort of contact people and, and, and meet people and ask them what he was like and all that sort of stuff. Um, but you know, a lot of people that I spoke to, um, they were all sort of saying, "Look, you know, he was on steroids, he was on cocaine, he was drinking, he was beating people up, he was just fucking unhinged." So I just thought, well, you know, I'll play that however I can to make it feel that way. And uh, I think a lot of people that saw it did think that you know he came across that way. So a lot of people did say, "Actually, you reminded me of him." Um, apart from his family, who said, "Obviously, that wasn't." You know, him, he wasn't like that at all. He was an angel. He used to help old ladies across the road and things like that. Um, um, but, you know, he's a great guy. Uh, sorry, he was a great guy because, you know, he, he has got, uh, and he still has got some amazing friends that speak dearly of him, like Nigel Benn and, um, you know, Carl Leach and people like that. So, um, obviously, he wasn't all bad. Um, but, you know, I just, you know, when you get a script, you read it and, you know, you do a bit of research and then you kind of go, well, how would I play it and what do I think he'd do? And, and then obviously Julian had his own ideas and, you know, he, he was sort of saying, look, guys, I think it'd be more aggressive here. I think, you you know, you should say cunt or things like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't actually say that, but um, I just made that up because he hate, actually hated it because everybody on the film just kept saying cunt. And it was actually quite funny because everyone would say, what do you mean you cunt? What are you looking at, you cunt? Do you think, go, can you all just stop fucking saying cunt? Because it's not in the script. Stop adding it in. And it was funny, because he actually said that we actually out-cunted Goodfellows, which I thought was pretty remarkable. So uh, that's my, my claim to fame, you know. <laughs> it's just that it's funny. I mean, um, I think you kind of get a bit carried away. I mean, there's been a few few times when we've been doing stuff and people have been hurt, you know what I mean? But it's not been because we were being, you know, like one in Rise of the Foot so there was a scene where some football hooligans had to run at these other football and they had to like jump over, a, 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 it was like a wall or a, a little sort of bollard thing in the road. And when one of them went over, he slipped and he actually landed on his wrist and broke his wrist. And if you actually watch the film, you can actually see him. And then he gets back up and carries on going, and all that. And I had a phone call saying, oh, you know, uh, one of your mates has done his wrist in, he's fell over and broke his wrist. I'm thinking, oh, for fuck's sake, you know, we're going to have an insurance claim, it's all going to be aggravation. And I rang him up and said, oh, I hear you broke your wrist. He went, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, I just want to know, is that going to stay in the film? I went, yeah, of course. And he went, great. He goes, I don't give a fuck. He goes, I don't tell everybody, I was a guy who broke my wrist on. You know, so he actually didn't want to claim, he just went, fuck it, it, it happened. But other people would have made a big thing about it and said, oh no, my wrist, I'm, I can't write again, you know, I can't wank again, whatever. So um, that's that's essentially, you know, So and, and then occasionally, you know, if you're doing a fight scene or some throws out the window, they might fall wrong or you might crash a car, you might hit your head on something. But <coughs> other than that, you know, you always have like professional stuntmen and women, and, and, and everything gets choreog um, choreograph. I say that many choreograph choreographed. Well, you know what I mean, right? Um, they get, they they get they they just basically ensure everybody does things properly, but everybody enjoys it because normally when you're on, on a set, they want to sit in the room and you know you got to say your lines and, and then turn it around and you got to say your lines and they're going to put it over there and you're going to say your lines again. You spend like half a day just doing the same thing over and over again. And, you know, although it's fun, it's not as exciting as if you're running down the road throwing people out of windows and shooting people. So, um, in a way, it's nice to obviously break it up a little bit, but I think it's fun to have, you know, but when you're throwing people out of windows or beating people up or, you know, in, there's a good scene in, in, in Rise of the Foot Soldier where there's a couple of naked women in a limo um, with me 
um, Craig Fedvass and Radha Manukian. You know, that is a laugh, right? So, you know, you, you, you could do that and, uh, you know, for me, that that's a perk of the job, you know, you get to sort of train yourselves with beautiful naked women. I mean, you're not allowed to, you know, touch my anything, obviously, because it's, you know, you, you, you act in a professional manner, but, you know, there's, there's harder days at the office. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, there's uh, Saving Santa comes out this Christmas, that's through uh, the Weinstein Company, and um, that's been sold around the world, that's, that's going to get a big release, a lot of heat, because it's a ch children's animation, which is exciting. Um, and we've got a film called Plastic, I've only got a small role in that, but I'm, I really was producing that, that was my kind of big, um, it's the biggest budget film we've made, um, and we produced that, and you know, we're just about to do a deal with Paramount on that, so, you know, we've done some... We've gone from doing these little sort of low budget films to sort of bigger budget films with big studios. So we're now sort of moving up the ladder, and um, you know uh, they're they're the forthcoming projects. Then we've got um, we've got a film that we're we're putting together about the Shah of Iran um, with Sir Ben Kingsley, and um, we're talking to a really famous Oscar-winning writer called uh, Bill Nicholson about writing the script for that. And um, we've got a couple of um, we've got Julian Gilby's next film, uh, Thirty Feet of Dust. Um, and we've got the LA job, so we've got a few things you know on the horizon. Um, but you know, as always, we've got to get these things down first, and then we move into those.